My name is Nazir Bichet. I'm the president of the Canadian Egyptian Congress. I have nothing against our friends, Muslim religion or the Muslim themselves. I'm against any religion in any school, regardless. The religion should be taught at home or in a church or a mosque or anywhere. Parents can teach their children about religion in, on Saturday, Sunday or after school. The other thing is the children could be bused by the Imam that was claiming that he will be responsible for the teaching and the uh, prayer. He could bus them to the uh, uh, to the mosque after prayer. They, they could come back. He claimed that they will not show up or come back to school. Well, if he is teaching them prayers through that prayers and also they should teach them honesty. Part of honesty to be honest about your future. Children or the young people should go back to the classroom. I called the most uh, reputable Islamic university in the world, which is Azhar in Egypt. And I asked them, could people postpone the pr Friday pr prayers instead of one o'clock to five o'clock? They said, yes, you could postpone any prayer God is very merciful, so you can postpone your prayers. So I don't see the uh, the problem in here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You are. Okay, my name is uh, Reverend Tony Costa, and I'm with Costa Christian Costa Christian Mission, and uh, we are here with our uh, colleagues, uh, different faith groups. We're here to protest uh, Muslim prayers in the Toronto schools. The reason why we're opposed to this is because this is a violation of the Education Act of Ontario, which forbids the exercise of religion in schools. And we are here to uh, bring that to the attention of the Toronto District School Board, call attention to the fact that not, or, not only are they in contravention to the Education Act, but that they're also in effect discriminating against non-Muslims. And so our task here uh, this evening is to to put a halt to this, to put a stop to this, and to call for equality uh, for all people and for all religious uh, faiths, but not allowing those faiths to exercise in and within the public, uh, Toronto public school system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sohail Raza, the President of Muslim Canadian Congress. I'm very concerned today as a Muslim about prayers being uh, orchestrated and displayed in a school. Religion is for me personally and it should be either taught at home or in a place of religious worship. Our country and our school system is secular and free. It has no room to display religiosity or to display an ideology that is sneaking into Canada. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Good evening, my fellow Canadians. Good evening! He is a hard act to follow. He must have taken 10 cans of Red Bull. <laughs> but I will try. At least two. I am a Canadian Muslim, free to speak without fear, to worship in my own way, free to stand for what I think is right, free to oppose what I believe is wrong, and free to choose those who shall govern my country. This heritage of freedom I pledge to uphold for myself and all humankind. If this sounds familiar, it is, because I've shamelessly stolen these words from Canada's 13th Prime Minister, John Diefenbaker's speech on July 1st, 1960, because with a slight tweak, these words exemplify why I came to Canada. Yes. And as a Canadian, I value the freedom to have discussion, debate, and dissent with dignity and respect. And this is why I'm here. My own faith is reflected in a prophetic statement by Prophet Muhammad who said, 
seek knowledge even if you have to go to China. He could have said, go to China and convert the Chinese. Or he could have said, go to China and establish Friday prayers in schools. But he stressed knowledge as the essence of faith, because knowledge without faith is just dogma. Let me add that under Canada's Charter of Rights, all of us are free to practice our faith however we wish in the private sphere of our lives and in our places of worship. Within the four walls of our temples, our churches, synagogues and mosques, we respect and value the norms of that place of worship. Hence, we have freedom of religion at its best. We stand at a crossroads today where the public and private spheres of our lives have collided badly. And it didn't have to come to this. So you may wonder why I, as a Muslim woman, am totally opposed to the idea of prayer in public schools. Any prayer in public schools. There are many reasons for this. Moral, social, ethical, and religious. And let me elaborate. Firstly, most of us came to this country by choice. Well aware that Canada is a secular country where the majority is still Christian, thank you. But there is a separation of church and state which we should respect without forcing our religious ideologies on Canadian institutions. In 1988, the Ontario Court of Appeal ruled that the use of the Lord's Prayer and opening exercises in public schools offended the Charter because it was not inclusive. So the Lord's Prayer was taken out of public schools because it, quote, actually stigmatized children and coerced them into religious observance that was offensive to them. This is what they said. And Canadians upheld that decision. There are still enough private religious schools for those who feel strongly about having faith-based education. Today, there are almost 700 private schools in Ontario, including religious schools. But it's extremely important to me to see that public schools remain dedicated to secular education and equal treatment for all, which is what we came to Canada to celebrate. We came here to celebrate our differences, not to, not to antagonize our differences. Hosting congregational prayers for one faith community clearly discriminates against others. And our tax dollars should not be used for this. From a religious perspective of my own faith, let me share with you that there is a spiritual dimension of Islam that is tolerant, peaceful, inclusive, and not in your face. This is the traditional, liberal, spiritual message of the faith, followed by a majority, including me. My family left Pakistan because religion was being thrust down our throats, when the Quran clearly says in chapter 2 there should be no compulsion in religion. Opposed to this is the political manifestation of Islam, which we call Islamism or radical Islam. Islamism is an armed political ideology similar to fascism and engaged in a worldwide effort to subvert democracies and expand the space for the implementation of its ideology, the Sharia. Radical Islam derives from Islam, but it is anti-modern, triumphalistic, misanthropic, misogynist, anti-Christian, anti-Semitic, terroristic, and aggressive. In the past 15 years, we have seen the rise of this Saudi-funded global threat, which aims to slowly entrench itself into the Canadian system through its institutions. I'm informing of you, you of this, not so that we have a rara rally, but this is the reality. And you know it as well as I do. Don't just take my word for it. Yes. There is ample proof that this ideology does, does exist. And its largest victims are Muslims like myself. Yes, that's right. This ideology exists in organizations in Canada who are not interested in the larger good of the country. They are not interested in loyalty to the land or living harmoniously with each other. I'll give you just a couple of examples. A fact that a member of the Canadian Arab Federation said, F you Canada on Canada Day. How does that feel? And that the head of the Canadian Islamic Congress said on public television that Israeli women and children are justifiable to be killed. The website of MAC, which is the Muslim, uh, which is the um, Muslim Association of Canada, 
openly endorses the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood, which, if you have time to read, speaks about implementation of Sharia in the public sphere. Have no doubts that these are the same people who are pushing the envelope for establishment of their ideology in Canadian institutions. First, there was Sharia by stealth, then the push to pass off niqab as a religious requirement when it isn't, and now congregational prayers in public schools. If religious communities are dogmatically adamant about implementing their faith in public, then they should perhaps listen to the advice of the Australian Prime Minister, who recently, recently said very clearly that immigrants should consider moving to countries where religion is imposed in the public sphere and where Sharia might work. So that one-way ticket is very welcome at any time. <laughs> From a social perspective, if institutionalized worship is inculcated in schools, these same students will join the MSAs, the Muslim Students Associations, as soon as they reach the university. And MSAs are fast becoming a hotbed for the rise of radical jihadists, including indulging in anti-Semitism as though it was part of the curriculum. The message is not one of inclusivity of, or pluralism, which is what Canada is about, but exactly the opposite. Besides, our sons and daughters are fighting the same ideology in Afghanistan, and yet we want to implement it here in Canada? How ironical is that? Today, these Islamists are a minority, but if we don't expose them, they'll become the majority. And let me assure you, assure you that they will work at diminishing the distance between church and state, the distance between private and public, while the meaning of freedom, liberty and equality will no longer be the same. I am totally shocked that the Toronto District School Board has become party to such an agenda when it's very clear that there should be no indoctrination in education. The policy clearly states, and I quote, a school may sponsor the study of religion, but not sponsor the practice of religion. Let me give you one second and share the policies of the Toronto District School Board under this, this uh, guidelines and procedures for the accommodation of religious requirements, practices, and observances. And I'm quoting from this guideline. It says, and I quote, the public school system acknowledges freedom of religion under the charter. While we know freedom of religion exists, prayer is already legal in schools. Thousands of students pray on a voluntary basis in a non-destructive way. So formal school prayer is totally unnecessary. Both my boys went to public school and they prayed or fasted on their own responsibility. As a parent, there was never an expectation or demand that the school should accommodate them because it would have made them stand out as a special case, which they are not. They are just like every other Canadian. Yes. And their prayer is a private institution. Essentially, this debate is not about the prayer itself, but how and where it's performed. And more importantly, the intent of the people pushing this agenda. The Toronto District School Board guidelines go on to say, I quote, and protection from discrimination and harassment based on religion that is part of the Ontario Human Rights Code. From a perspective of human rights and equality, when girls are being made to stand at the back of the room, and more importantly, that private, personal condition, which is no one else's business but theirs, is exhibited to everyone. What else do you call discrimination and harassment? As a, Muslim, as a Muslim woman, as a mother, I find it not just offensive, but downright dehumanizing to treat young girls in this way at Valley Park. It will confuse them into thinking that they are lesser human beings when they grow up. And what message does this give to the larger student body on how they should treat girls? Furthermore, let me share with you what happens when religious dogma trumps freedoms. In Saudi Arabia, a few years ago, there was a fire in a girl's school. And some girls were not allowed to escape or run away because their heads were not covered. So they perished in the fire. We call this gender apartheid. And there's no place for, in Canada for such blatant inequality. Today, there is an even bigger ethical and moral dilemma. The board, under its document titled Limitations to Religious Accommodation, says, and I quote, the board will limit practices or conducts in its schools which may put public safety, health, 
of human rights and freedoms of others at risk. Well, hello, they're concerned about the human rights and freedoms of others, but it seems that the TDSP doesn't see how some students are coerced into such gatherings. And coerced they are, because let me remind you that there are many denominations and sects among Muslims, some who pray in different ways than others because they have the right and freedom to do so. When a mainstream denomination dominates the prayer room, what happens to the minorities? Also, what happens to those who wish to abstain? The psychological pressure, the peer pressure, fear of being ostracized will force them into the space and then be humiliated because of their gender or a different way of praying. One of the court warnings against having pub prayers in public school is that school prayer may lead to intolerance. It's not a question of may, my friends. It does lead to intolerance. Public prayer will highlight religious differences of which students may have been unaware. Since no school prayer honors the tenets of all religions, it makes sense to keep all prayers out of public schools. The TDSP should not toe the policies of the Islamists, but should follow Canadian guidelines in separating church and state and by keeping all prayers out of school. This is the only way Canada will be strong and free. Thank you.